In terms of choice of therapy for second line, um, we have been using the same combination of uh, cladribine uh, followed by rituximab. And uh, it's interesting that uh, in our hands, the patients, the few patients, about 10 patients who we have done this, uh, their uh, second remission, at least in the patients who've been followed long enough, has been longer than uh, their original remission with cladribine alone or pentostatin alone. And this is important also as a confirmation of the usefulness of that strategy uh, because historically um, there are publications from various groups that have shown that if you retreat uh, a hairy cell leukemia patient uh, uh, with the uh, same nucleoside analog or on, uh, on relapse and subsequent relapse, subsequent remission durations will be progressively shorter. Uh, so I think, uh, in my opinion, the uh, standard of care for a relapse patient these days who had received prior a nucleoside analog should be nucleoside analog plus rituximab. And I don't know if um, you have uh, any other alternative uh, strategies in mind. No, I, I totally agree. I think that uh, in our hands, uh, that approach, and I think in your hands too, that approach gives you a complete remission rate of 100%. Um, whereas if you treat with uh, purine analog alone, uh, you're going to get a complete remission rate of uh, around 65%. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and there are other uh, options uh, for second-line treatment of hairy cell that don't involve chemotherapy. Um, uh, but uh, uh, those uh, do not offer this, uh, this same 100% uh, uh, complete remission rate. Uh, so I, I agree with that. We actually are randomizing patients currently um, at the NIH uh, f with, uh, um, with uh, uh, immediate or delayed uh, rituximab for patients with one, uh, one prior uh, cladribine. Uh, so, um, so, I, so I definitely agree with that. Um, when would you use splenectomy? I, and uh, I, I've, I, I imagine you wouldn't use it after the first uh, uh, treatment of cladribine uh, with a relapse, but... Uh. Well, I can say that in the past 20 years, I've not used a splenectomy for any patient with hairy cell leukemia, and I think uh, this is probably going to become even uh, more of an obsolete strategy with the availability of uh, newer agents such as BRAF inhibitors, as well as combinations of BRAF inhibitors with... Uh, nucleoside analog, uh, sorry, with um, um, uh, anti-CD20 antibodies, as well as even uh, a B-cell receptor inhibitor, ibrutinib is useful in some patients. So I think splenectomy is probably now for the archives of uh, medicine. Right, and I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I, uh, I know that there are uh, a lot of uh, traditionalists out there that do uh, recommend splenectomy um, uh, for earlier lines of treatment. Um, I think that, uh, uh, I, I mean, for myself, I, I did uh, uh, recommend this and, uh, uh, for a patient with hairy cell leukemia variant who had a very aggressive form of, of hairy cell. And in hairy cell variant, uh, this is a, um, this is a uh, subject that we haven't talked yet today about, but, uh, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's really classified as a separate disease uh, from hairy cell leukemia. Uh, it tends to have different uh, characteristics. Um, uh, the patient's, uh, the cells are, are uh, slightly different. Uh, they may still have these hairy projections, uh, but they have different uh, characteristics, uh, CD25 negative. They generally don't have the BRAF mutation, so these patients are not eligible for the BRAF inhibitors. Uh, and uh, these patients are, are not eligible for as many things. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there are some patients who have very aggressive uh, hairy cell variant. Um, there was a patient who had uh, just a terribly severe splenomegaly, wouldn't respond or relapsed after other treatments. Uh, and we used splenectomy to buy him a few more months, and that's exactly what it did. Um, and so I think that it was helpful in that respect. But there are, um, there are many other treatments now uh, that, uh, that, we'll, uh, that we'll now touch on.